Hi everyone, thank you for coming back to my channel. This video is Rapture at Hand Part 3. Okay, let's get started. The criminal imposter, Liz, Liz Battenberg, aka Queen Elizabeth II. The sovereign cannot, can do no wrong and no laws can be brought against her, but only in her own courts. The Civilist Loot The Civilist provides leverage expenditure for the monarch to spend on palace entertaining. Queen Victoria stole most of this annual gifts from public funds and banked it in the, the royal maze of offshore banks, as did her descendants until 1992. Since 1992, when a few Labour MPs demanded a closer look at palace expenditure, the present, the present Queen Elizabeth II has been unable to steal as much as her ancestor, ancestors. In 1993, it came to light that Queen had a civilist surplus of £35 million. A half-decent head of state would have returned that money to the treasury for use in our schools and hospitals. Elizabeth II held on it for soft force. Were it not for the book Royal Fortune, which led to more palace school scrutiny, nobody would have known about the Queen's civilist surplus. surplus. The £35 million would have followed centuries of civil list surpluses into royal Swiss accounts. August year 2009, we now know Elizabeth II had the insolence to designate the civil list surplus as the Queen's Reserve, which she now insists is all but spent on spent and therefore she says she needs another six million pounds added to her annual civil list of 7.9 million pounds. Between 1952 and 1992, the Queen stole another 30 million pounds by illegally avoiding tax. The stolen money was sorted away in Swiss banks where it would be would have realized 300 million pounds by now anyone who thinks it, this woman has any love for britain and the british has no real knowledge of the so-called royal family from the start of her reign the queen has had to plan for the possibility of great britain becoming a nuclear dancer the British public have never for one moment entered those plans. The Chernobyl happened at Sellafield or Sizewell. The royals have escape plans standing by 24-7, private Pacific islands to go to, and billions in foreign banks. In case of a nuclear disaster, the evacuation of the Queen's family and ministers is reviewed and rehearsed every year, sometimes twice a year. The Queen's subjects will be abandoned without as, as so much as a royal wave. The Uranium Queen. Once upon a time, we were told nuclear power stations would provide electricity too cheap to meter. We then learned that when the Queen opened her first uranium power station, it had had nothing to do with providing electricity. Nuclear power stations are built to produce nuclear weapons material for Her Majesty's government. UK Queen in depleted uranium trade. The Queen of England deals extensively in $17 trillion depleted uranium trade. From the very beginning of nuclear power, Her Majesty's government planned and plotted to hide the horrendous cost of running nuclear power stations with massive subsidies of the taxpayers' money distributed under the cloak of Her Majesty's Official Secret Act. The Queen's Uranium Mines The Queen owns mines in America, Canada, Canada and uh, Africa. The uranium mining company Triotino Mines was formed for the British royal family in the late 
1950s by the Queen's Africa advisor Roland Walter Fehrhoff, described by a fellow German as an ardent, ardent supporter of Hitler and an arrogant, nasty piece of work to boot. The Queen's advisor had been a passionate member of the Nazi youth movement. Roland became Africa's most ruthless businessman. Africa being a prime source of the uranium used in the Queen's nuclear reactors. Between 1957 to 1976, British reactors produced enough um, nuclear waste weapons material to suit our defense requirements for the next 200 years, by which time nuclear weapons will be obsolete. Although we had more nuclear weapons material than we could have could ever use, without choking our, on our own nuclear fallout, the Queen's cart cartel had no intention of giving up their obscene profits from their nuclear power and waste companies. Funded by the stroke of the royal pen with an endless supply of the tax taxpayers' billions. When electricity defense announced the new European pressurized reactor would be more efficient than the old Chernobyl-type reactor, they were, for once, actually telling the truth. The EPR will overcook nuclear fuel. This will produce between 5 to 15 times more eternal fatal high-level nuclear waste for the taxpayer to pay for forever and ever. An accident like Chernobyl in an EPR will release much higher levels of fatal radiation, causing 5 to 15 times the human mystery Chernobyl has. How is that for nuclear efficiency? May year 2009, the Queen granted her French collaborators permission to build two of these front doomsday machines in Somerset and another two in Suffolk. No doubt our crater are uh, already writing letters of thanks to Her Majesty in anticipation of these dream targets of nuclear mass destruction. The Crown prerogative dictates there can be no questions in Her Majesty's Parliament probing Her Majesty's control of the energy market. Members of Parliament are not even allowed to think of how much the royals are making every single minute for, uh, from their oil, gas, and nuclear investments, which gives you some idea how patient, patently important members of Her Majesty's Parliament really are. The British head of state, Elizabeth II, presides over a weekly meeting of the Joint Intelligence Committee, where she and not the passing Prime Minister is fully briefed on the activities of all the British secret services. The Queen alone appoints military commanders. No British agents or British troops carried out a single act overt or covert without direct orders signed by the British head of state. Um, I think they that might be true or um, a little bit adjustment for now because I know um, Theresa May was a puppet so um, you know both of them are on the, were on the same boat so um, that's why uh, the Brexit wasn't um, taking place and now Boris Johnson um, um, will oppose, of course, uh, the deep state and um, the recent conflicts between Iran and UK is a um, deep state false flag events and um, they try to lure either President Trump or Boris Johnson to um, react on the matters and start the Third World War. But I'm sure both of them will not fall into the trap. So now we're just waiting for the, for the deep state to uh, create a false flag to start the Third World War on their own and pointing fingers at uh, someone else. Uh, most likely pointing fingers at um, Russia, China or uh, North Korea. 
uh, according to the Bible, I guess. I think. Let's see. With Rothschilds acting as her principal nominee bankers, Queen Elizabeth II has become the wealthiest woman in the world. In financial circles, the queen is known as the world's ultimate insider trader. Not only is she advised by the world's richest financiers, she also has full access to all British state secrets through the daily red boxes. The Queen has 455 military advisors in 30 countries. If the Queen learns that some country, let's say、uh, Nigeria, is about to be destabilized, she can immediately sell her Nigerian oil shares and invest that money in arms, in arms sales to Nigeria. The only people who know the murky. Details of royal insider dealing are those on the same gravy chart. Gravy train. It would prove impossible for anyone to press charges on of insider trading and conflict of interest against the queen in her own courts. Sovereign rules. Congress can discuss royal family business, but it is forbidden for Her Majesty's Parliament to discuss the family business, or the royal's offshore fortune, or the fact that Her Majesty has illegal used her law law lords to keep her obscene wealth a secret. The Queen's holdings in Rio Tinto Singh. Was first brought to public attention by a leak from a source at the Bank of England to Andrew Morton, who wrote the who wrote the authorized biography of Diana. Philip Beresford, author of the Book of the British Rich, written in conjunction with the Sunday Times of London, found that Queen tends to invest in blue chip stock, blue chip stocks, including Rio Tinto Zinc. Uh, General Electric Company of Great Britain, Imperial Chemical Industries, Royal Dutch Shell, and British Petroleum. Among those acting as royal cutouts and nominees are S. G. Warburg's subsidiary Roe and Pittman, Baring, and Kaslanov. Forbes magazine. Also reported, the Queen is a major Audi Z shareholder, as is the Bank of England. Charles Hagen, co-author of Elizabeth and Philip, also states the Queen is a major shareholder in Audi Z, which, with her old friends at Anglo American, controls 12% of the world's precious strategic and base metals and minerals. In 1976, the U.S. Senate Foreign, Re- Foreign Relations Committee found that an international cartel, of which RTZ was a major partner, had been formed in 1971 to fix the world's uranium prices. A federal grand jury found corroborating evidence of RTZ's role. To protect RTZ's directors and their richest shareholder, the Queen, Lord Dunning, and the Lord Lords, crushed Westinghouse's ability to take their positions in the、um, United Kingdom. On June 16, 1976, in hearings in the United States House Interstate on Foreign Commerce Subcommittee, Jerry Affair, Chairman of Gulf Oil, admitted. That the cartel in which RTZ was his partner had criminally conspired to falsely increase the price of uranium on world markets. When the Tennessee Valley Authority tried to sue RTZ for price fixing, the United States Attorney General again demanded testimony from RTZ executives. However, the directors of RTZ and their boss, the Queen, were once again protected by the law laws, who claimed RTZ. Directors did not have to appear before an American court, as this was an unacceptable invasion of British sovereignty. Starting in June 1975, Audi Z and Texco 
uh, were spearheading shipments from the North Sea Aga field to the refineries of British Petroleum, in which the royal family have a massive stake dating back to the Anglo-Persian oil company set up by George V. George the Fifth and his bankers to rape the Iranian oil fields. Anglo-Persian evolved into um, BP, colluding with the Queen, the Bank of England ex established a highly illegal nominee company, the Bank of England Nominees Limited, to hide the Queen's investments as well as the investments of those heads of state the Queen personally recommends. The Sultan of Brunei, King of Thailand, the Kuwaiti royal family, King Fahd of Saudi Arabia, and his then friend Saddam Hussein um, all became clients of Queen Lizzie's private bank. Bank of England is only one of the many cutouts used by the Queen to hire her obscene arms, oil, and nuclear profits. Again, um, in Asia, the deep state infiltrated uh, a long time ago uh, in Thailand and then um, Japan, um, eventually Singapore, and now South Korea in the past uh, 15 years or so. And so that um, they have full control in Asia. Of course, here in U.S., Mexico already uh, infiltrated by them long time ago. And then uh, Canada, the prime minister is uh, a Freemason. So think about it. They control every single country. They just um, pick like several countries as bad guys and then pick other countries as good guys so that we fight against each other internally and then they can um, rob us to death. About RTZ, um, Rio Trino is a leading international mining group headquartered in the UK. Combining Rio Tino plus a London and NASDAQ listed company and Rio Tino Limited, which is listed on the Australian Securities Exchange. Rio Tino's business is finding, mining, and processing mineral resources. Major products are aluminum, copper, diamonds, energy, uh, gold, industrial minerals, and iron ore. Activities span the world but are strongly represented in Australia and North America with significant businesses in South America, Asia, Europe and South Africa and more. The British monarch, monarch became the ultimate insider trader in the reign of the Mad King George III, 1769 to 18, 1815. George King George III was perfectly sane when he gave some of the crown lands to Parliament in exchange for extravagant, extravagant annual payments of taxpayers' money to fund the monarchy and their palace-pampered lifestyle of offensive luxury. These payments are called the Civil List. The royal's annual Civil List became an annual supply of money for nothing to be used for uh, warmongering for profits and empire money grabbing speculation. By 1936, when the Queen's grandfather, George V, died, the royal's private offshore fortune was estimated at 1 billion sterling. A small part of the present uh, Queen's massive disposable wealth is the tens of billions amassed tax-free between her coronation in 1953 until the public demanded she pay tax in 1992. The Queen calls 1992 her Annus Horribilis. This was the year of the Windsor Castle fire. That's how they robbed the taxpayer back by paying tax. 
Widespread public outrage erupted when the taxpayers were arbitrarily told they would have to pay approximately thirty million pounds for the fire. The outcome was a memorandum of understanding that the Queen would pay some taxes at her pleasure. Although the Queen can ignore this memorandum of understanding any time she pleases. In year 2002, it pleased the Queen to refuse to pay tax on the known £17 million the Queen Mum left to the Queen. Prior to her death, the Queen Mum was all, always said to be broke. It transpired that eight years before she died, the Queen Mum had put £140 million into Swiss trusts for her grandchildren. Little Lizzie's little house. During the 1930s depression, when a third of British children suffered growth defects caused by constant hunger, Little Lizzie, the present queen, had her own child-sized six-roomed thatched house in the gardens of Royal Arch, Royal Windsor Grey Park. The Times reported the small house is fully furnished with running water, electric lights, and a wireless. Architect John Lush rebuilt Royal Lodge for the depraved Prenny. It became one of the Queen Mum's many homes. She died there, aged one o one, pickled in the finest gin other people's money can buy. Part of the Queen's known wealth consists of her private collection of castles, castles, jewelry, works of art, and a portfolio of blue chip stocks and bonds and real estate investments around the world. The 1991 The Financial Times estimated Her Majesty's investment portfolio, spare cash to play with, was worth at least three billion pounds. Her total wealth, thousands of Billions pounds um, is divided into many parts. One p- known part is the Venetian style founder that must be passed on to her heir, free from inheritance tax. The Queen's American business fleecing U.S. taxpayers. In 1968, Senator Thomas J. McIntyre and Representative C. P. O. Conti confirmed Elizabeth. The second holds a major share in Cottle's textile. Cottle's came to their attention when the Queen used the company as her nominee to hire her ownership of the largest plantation in Mississippi, on the banks of the Mississippi River near the border with Arkansas. The Queen also uses Cottle's as a nominee for the purchase of U.S. stocks. What really upset. The congressman was the wealthiest woman in the world. Was getting agricultural subsidies to run a plantation in the United States. The congressional record shows how the queen obtained one of the world's largest plantations, complete with sharecroppers in Scott, Mississippi, from Cottles, previously known as the Delta and Pine Land. Company, the Queen's Farm, has thirty-eight thousand acres of rich soil, a factory, and a mill. Between 1968 to 1970, the Queen's Farm received 1.5 million dollars from the United States Department of Agriculture. At the time, the plantation was worth forty-four point five million dollars. It employed hundreds of African American laborers at minimal wages. On April sixteen, nineteen seventy, Senator McIntyre, while introducing a bill on farm payments, said, "We pay the Queen a hundred thousand." A hundred twenty thousand dollars for not planting cotton on the farmland she owns in Mississippi. The Queen owns many plots of American land, including a stud farm in Kentucky, where she entertained one of her many boyfriends, the head lay of the royal stables and father of Prince. Andrew, the Queen's EU business, the British head of state Elizabeth II, 
alone has the power to declare war and conclude treaties, including the infamous Maastricht Treaty, which gave British law-making powers to the Queen's bankers running the EU. The Queen sent Peter Savangoli Mendelssohn to Brussels, imposed the Lisbon Treaty on the uneducated. Some uneducated people believe Mendelssohn apprentice Tony Blair ordered the illegal wars on Afghanistan and Iraq. This was never true. History will recall Blair as just another palace backman. Passing prime ministers do not take Britain to war. Only the head of state can do that. Trident subs embedded royal profits. With tens of billions in Swiss trusts invested in uranium mines and tens of billions in American trusts invested in uranium weapons production, BAE systems, Lockheed Martin, etc., and tens of billions invested in foreign nuclear new build companies. Arriva, Westinghouse, Halliburton, Bechtel, and the like, the Queen puts her obscene profits first, second, third, and last. It was a labor prime mouthpiece who announced the British taxpayer would pay billions per year to rent American nuclear submarine missile systems made by companies partly owned by the royal family. Every prime mouthpiece since Jim Callaghan has assured the British public only the British can fire these American-made weapons. The Queen expects her simple subjects to believe the Yanks are daft enough to rent out um, nuclear weapons that could be fired back at them. The Crown and the Cross, the Black Nobility. The Black Nobility are the grounded heads of the world, the Blue Bloods, the True Bloods. They are reptilian hybrids who were given the divine right to rule and enslave the peoples of Earth by the reptile sons of God described in the Book of Enoch. Here you can see the Pyramid of Secret Societies. Oh, apparently Vatican is only the fourth. I thought they're on the top. So who's at the top? Skull and Bones is here. Pilgrim Society. Uh, Bohemian Club. Club of Rome. Rockefeller Trilateral Co uh, Commission. Bilderberg Group. And so here. The points of the crown upon their heads symbolize the horns protruding from the scrolls of the aristocratic ruling house of Draco. They are the snake in the Garden of Eden and have their crooked fingers in every polluting pie going on the planet. The black nobility worship the black sun and are hard dead. They are heart rippers, blood drinkers, and rulers of the world, and architects of the satanic new world order. The earth groans with the slaughter, slavery, mystery, and the suffering that these colonizers, civilizers, these beasts in ship's clothing have wrought upon all the nations of the world. They are the monsters of Grimm's fairy tale and Tolkien Sarah. So sure of victory because they run the show. The Black Church. Uh, this is the inverted pentagram. Hand in hand with the Black nobility is the Black Church, the doctrines of the Catholic Church and their brutal enforcers, the Jesuits, have been responsible for the bomb burning, torturing, drowning, and rape of millions, plus all the other souls who perished in their holy wars. Women in the black church are second-class second citizens, and being barred from contraceptives are shadows of their husbands and doomed to be 
terminally pregnant. The Eucharist, the taking of communion, is nothing more than a symbol of blood drinking and cannibalism dressed up in a fairy story. Rape and sodomy are the order of the day in the black church. The brutality and molestation of children in its epidemic amongst priests, nuns, bishops, cardinals, and Nasia. And every day, there's another shocking revelation as shit gets misted by the carpet brush brush and scum rises to the surface. So that is what um, President Trump is doing right now to try to break down the net the uh, pedophile satanic rape sex network sex trafficking ring. Um, right now they investigating the Vatican hate of animals. There is nothing more satanic and monstrous than the black church doctrines concerning animals and other life forms by asserting that animals have no souls. Catholic dogma totally contradicts that of Gen Genesis 1.24-25. The Rev. J. The Rev. J Todd Ferrier, in his book, On Behalf of the Creatures, quotes Joseph Rickaby, writer of the Catholic Church Treatise, Moral Philosophy. There is no shadow of evil resting on the practice of causing pain to brutes in sport, where the pain is not in the sport itself, but an incidental concomitant of it. Much more in all that con conduces to the substance of man may we give pain to brutes as also in the pursuit of science. Nor are we bound to any anxious care to make this pain as little as may be. Brutes are things in our regard. It would be difficult to find a more striking example of callousness towards animal suffering. The black church's arrogant satanic doctrine that animals have no souls has created a holocaust of torment for all creation. The planetary greed, the black nobility and the black church have hold the wealth, sacred books, scrolls, and texts from the nations they destroyed. They know about the Earth's magnetic grid and how to program it to control every living being on the on the planet, which is the ley lines that I was talking about in my earlier uh, videos. Uh, I was um, concentrated on the French meridian line, which is the rose line, the zero line on Earth. The idea of a planetary grid is not pseudoscience as the mouthpieces of this information would have us believe. The concept dates back to Pluto and the ancient world. According to Pluto's theory, the electromagnetic grids around the planet were comprised of the five platonic solids. This geometric form a vibrating matrix sound that holds the planet together. If there was no energetic counterpart, the Earth would not exist. Ley lines. The grids or ley lines are, as they are called, intersect at various points around the planet forming an energetic matrix. This is the planetary equivalent to the meridians and acupuncture points in the human body. Where the grid lines intersect, the power is amplified and becomes a hotspot of power. Any injection of energy at these special places affects the overall frequency of the geometric matrix of the grid. Many believe that the stone circles and monolithic structures found on the intersections of the planetary grid are man-made. But primitive man did not have the knowledge or technology to build huge structures in the crosshairs of the subtle energies of Earth's magnetic grid. Where the lays connect, there are portals containing both a negative and positive charge. One charge allows energetic possession of the human mind, 
by demonic entities, and the other allows interdimensional beings to physically manifest in this reality. Some portals on the lake crossings are temporary power points, and can only be activated at special times. This small these moments of charge are calculated by precise mathematical measurements and favorable aspects of astrological significance for the summoning of devils. Other portals are built on lines of power and are all connected by unholy resonance. Child sacrifice, sadistic sex, and satanic rituals have been carried out at these charged points for centuries. Babies and small children are preferred as sacrifice because their soul essence is nearer to the true creator and is more potent in the summoning of demonic entities. Manipulating the frequency of the greed. The frequency of the greed affects our living earth and all who sail on her. The cumulative energetic effect of terror, massive child sacrifice, torture, and debauchery being pumped into our energetic matrix affects our moods and feelings, making us sick, apathetic, depressed, and fearful. This, for this is true. Whoever rules the energetic grid rules the world. Satanic cover-ups. The extent of the crimes against mankind carried out by the pedophilic black twins of Crown and Cross have been carefully covered up for hundreds, if not thousands, of years. A great illustration of the black nobility perverting the cause of justice is illustrated in the Mark the troll affair that took place in Belgium in the 90s. Chateau de Zomahoua and the Marc de Tour affair. According to Wiki, Marc de Tour was born 6 November 1956 and is a Belgian serial killer and child molester. He was convicted of having kidnapped, tortured, sexually abused six girls from 1995 to 1996 ranging in age from 8 to 19, four of whom he murdered. After a few years in prison, he was released, and the kidnappings begin, began again. Reading in Crime Library, Rachel Bell had this to say, the Detour case gained worldwide attention, not only because of the horrific nature of his crimes, but also the gross negligence and amateurism of police and government officials involved in the investigation. The Detour case caused such upset amongst Belgian citizens that it prompted one of the largest peacetime demonstrations since World War II, and a shake-up of the Belgian government causing the resignation and dismissal of several government officials. The Fritz Springmeier lines of the Illuminati, he mentions a secret castle located near the village of Mono in Belgium. This castle was, according to him, a center of the occult, satanic ceremonies, monarch, mind control, and human sacrifice. This castle is referred to as the Mothers of Darkness Castle, or K Castle of Kings. Sean Nicholas and Frederick Lefortry also mention the Amohua Castle in their book Dossier Pedophile. Le Scandale de l'Affaire du Tour. Pedophile file, the scandal of the Tour affair. The Mother of Darkness Castle was a place where satanic ritual parties and child sacrifice allegedly took place. The Mother of Darkness Castle in Belgium was a commissioned by the Illuminati House of Sescoburg Gotha, the British royal family who changed their name to Windsor in 1917. The castle was subsequently bought by other members of the black nobility. We have been spelled and indoctrinated by deception. Everything we have been taught is benevolent. The royals of wherever and their forenamed priests of this doctrine 
doctrine or that are all life haters. Our spiritual evolution is being blocked by a frequency that masquerades as human, when in fact this it is a veiled predator. The black twins of crown and cross are the root cause of the problems in this world, and are the physical and spiritual servants of the demiurge, the new world order, global union maps, and governance structure. There are a few versions of the new world order map, which range from four unions to ten. These unions represent a world that has been broken from nation states. Into simply re regions, the agenda for dissolving all nation states has been in play for decades. Partly, this has been brought into action by immigration policies imposed upon nations by the IMF, which is statutory management arm of the World Bank. They try to force. Each country to forfeit their sovereignty rights and、um, take away our liberty and freedom. Many countries, including New Zealand, were very productive and wealthy up until the 1960s. For our for our part, our prime minister at the time, Robert Muldoon. So out to the globalists by taking loans from the World Bank. These loans were never intended to be repaid, and indeed, their very terms ensured that they could not be. Much like the current scenario, whereby the countries of the world have been coerced into eight times more debt than can mathematically ever be repaid by fraudulent financial instruments such as derivatives, a global financial crash is inevitable. However, this can be mitigated by those who have woken up to the situation and who are prepared to do take positive action. Once the countries which were heavied into taking World Bank loans defaulted on their debts, the IMF statutory management clauses began to invoke the clauses that were built into these loans agreements. Such clauses included forcing legislation and required policy implementations, including immigration agendas and state-owned asset sales. The fact is that although there is a new world order, one world government agenda, we are dealing with multiple internal factions who are all part of the same general agenda. But who are each vying to be the actual power structure of this established globalist plan? A precursor and earlier attempt at establishing a world government was the League of Nations, which failed around the time of World War Two. The United Nations is the second such attempt in terms of setting up the the infrastructure for global governance, and has been far more successful. The UN has spawned many dark offshoot organizations, and among the sellout converts is our own ex prime minister Helen Clark. The envisaged but ultimately failed global governance structure, the global government, the world central bank. Global currency, a centralized religion, a microchipped population, which is the、uh, mark of the beast, and then a centralized religion, which is one world religion that、uh, the Pope signed the agreement early on this year with all the lead、uh, religion leaders, and then、um, a global currency is coming soon to replace our、uh, fiat money. Fiat currency, and which is a digital currency that、um, linked to our microchip, the microchip. European Union evolved from EEC. American Union evolved from NAFTA. Pacific Union evolved from APED. African Union evolved from AU. So we have European Union, and then right now,、um, since 
Bill Clinton, he established the NAFTA and continued on by、um, Obama. But now,、uh, President Trump,、uh, we written the NAFTA, which will no longer become. American Union. Instead, three countries with borders and have sovereignty rights in their own nations. Pacific Union, which is、um, the China Chinese government、um, established the Asia Pacific Free Trade Agreement. The ten unionized world religion、uh, world regions, which were planted. Region One (NAU): Canada, United States of America, Mexico, which is not going to happen as long as President Trump is alive. Region Two (EU): Western Europe, British Isles,、uh, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Turkey, and British Boris Johnson is going to break the EU. Region Three: Japan and Pacific. I think it's already changed to China in charge in、uh, the combination of region three, region four, region nine, region ten, and then some of the countries in all regions. I hope you guys found this video informative. Again,、uh, remember this information is just a.、Um, Like a blueprint for you guys to、um, do your own research, and I'm sure the overall concept is、um, pretty much accurate. But of course,、uh, the details might be、um, a little bit off, or I'm not sure because I just checked,、um, you know,、uh, on my own, and、um, you should check on your own also. Okay, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.